Hello, uh, I'm Annie. I work for UpCloud and I manage UpCloud's community and events. Very nice to meet you all. So what is UpCloud? Where have you ended up? And what is this whole thing that where, whose office are you at at the moment? So I'm going to give like a tiny, very brief introduction. And I trust that after the presentations by Contena and Yuhani, we can all just, you know, you can ask more and have questions answered and whatnot. So this is going to be very brief. So, uh, UpCloud is infrastructure as a service. So we do essentially not that many things, but we what we do, we do really, really well. So we have actually the world's fastest cloud, for sure. And this is, I'm not kidding, this is all through. This is not, you know, like marketing Jimbo, it's all right. So how is it possible, people usually ask here, and they're very like, can you actually say that? Like, is a Finnish tiny company, can they say that? We can. It's possible because we have a very, very dedicated tech team who for over the five years plus have actually dedicated building a service and shaving off all the tiny milliseconds from every single uh, service that we have, from every single application. Everything is just like optimized the T and perfection. So, and we are not just the fastest, we are fastest by a bit as well. So here are some numbers about it, as well as here. As you can see, we do quite well in the comparisons. So, in a nutshell, essentially, we offer services from across the globe, multiple different solutions, freely scalable services, and we have a 100 plus an SLA as well. And 24 hour service every day of the year, all the time from three different continents, like two different continents from London, Helsinki, and Singapore. But we offer it to everywhere, of course. Yeah. So we have really good references as well. Here is a couple of the companies that have been using us. Uh, you can ask us for more info or whatnot generally as well, of course. Then we have, of course, YUP Cloud. We are really good services in general. And here's some info about us in general. Yeah. And then these are our data center locations. So we have one in Chicago, London, Amsterdam, Helsinki, Frankfurt, and Singapore. And we have an office in Helsinki, Singapore, and London as well. And we are planning to have more data centers, obviously, around the world. But you know, you got to start world domination from somewhere. So this is where we're starting and heading off from here. So our pricing is, is quite good as well. He, here are the, in the top, there are preset plans, which you can use really conveniently. Um, but we also offer freely scalable servers built by the hour. Uh, and so anything is possible. If you want something really precise, everything is possible and we can make it happen. So we have a bit under 30 people working for UpCloud globally. Um, and here is uh, some of the lovely faces of the people. I can actually pinpoint here. There's Samu and Edo there. You can always look at them. And then there's Tommy there and then there's Stas there as well. Is there anyone else from our? Johnny. Oh yeah, you were behind a person, <laughs> but yeah. So you can uh, ask any of these people about what we do and why we do it and ask the tough questions as well. Yeah, or me as well. Yeah, so we have Twitter and Facebook that we use quite often, especially Twitter. So you can follow us there and see what we are up to all the time. And um, the last, but definitely not the least, so Contena. We love Contena, of course. And um, you can go to upcloud.contena. And from there, you can find free credits that you can use us and try out content as well. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thanks. So yeah, my name is Jussi and I'm from uh, Contena. Uh, and yeah, as I said, we love UpCloud also. And I it's just ask, actually started to think that it, it, it's really freaking cool to be able to say that you're the fastest in the world. Hats off for that. Uh, I'm going to give a, a really quick, ish, as, as quick as I can, intro to Contena before the, the main thingy that, that uh, Johan is, is uh, sharing to us how to run cool things with, with Contena. But uh, I guess most of you at least I've, I've seen around these meetups, so probably most of you already know Contena. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to just go through the, the ideas and, and, and how Contena works and, and those sort of things in a few slides. 
Yeah, so uh, Container is really a, a super easy platform to set up and, and maintain that, that uh, you can run your containers with. And uh, well, there's actually the biggest thing missing in, the, in there in, in that slide. So Container is, is fully open source, of course. So, uh, and works on any infrastructure, for example, on UpCloud, naturally. I thought that the biggest thing was to actually ship everything on any infrastructure. Yeah, well, de depends, of course, on your views always, but uh, uh, nowadays people seem to really, really appreciate things being open source. And, and in, in nowadays software market, you don't really have a good chance to, to even survive the market if you're not open source. But that's another discussion. Uh, there's quite a lot of people stargazing us on, on GitHub. We have quite a few pulls on, on our components on Docker Hub, whatever that means. We've been featured in Newstack publication a few times. Uh, we've been selected as open source rookies of the year to 2015, and then last year CIO Magazine store selected us as, as one of the open source companies to watch. Works anywhere, doesn't really matter. As, as long as you can run Docker, you can run Conten. It's just as, as simple as that. But of course, we, we do have ready-made plugins available for, for some of the, the uh, cloud providers like Amazon, UpCloud, Packet, uh, Azure, DO. I'm probably missing something, but you get the point. Works anywhere. We run like quite a lot of these meetup groups around the world also. Uh, just check the, the numbers today, and we seem to have uh, 1,600 members in the, in the meetup group, groups, 1,635 if I remember correct. But yeah, uh, in, in Contana we basically have, the, the, the kind of cent central concept that we have is, is a thing called grid. Uh, and the Contana grid is, is, is basically kind of a cluster of nodes and the nodes can run anywhere. Uh, and, and I really mean anywhere, uh, they can run on App Cloud. They can run on Amazon, and you can even provide hybrid solutions. You, you, so you can actually run part of your nodes on UpCloud, part of your nodes on, on Amazon, and, and even part of your nodes in your own servers in your basement if you want. I'm not sure whoever w really wants to do that any, any, anyway nowadays, but maybe somebody, somebody was and, and needs to actually do it. Uh, how we actually do we pull, it, pull it off together is, is that uh, on top of the, the kind of uh, computing capacity, the nodes that we have, we always automatically configure an overlay network. So what it basically means is that, that whenever you spin up your con containers somewhere, uh, the containers get attached to the overlay network, and then the containers can talk fr freely with each other regardless of the location. So my container running on Amazon side talks to container running on up UpCloud side, the container doesn't understand the location. He just, just talks to an IP, another IP address somewhere. And the, the hop through public internet, of course, that's a kind of bad thing. But what's really cool about the overlay technology weave that, that we use there, it can automatically encrypt the traffic between these public hops. So that's really cool. Of course, on top of the overlay network, we do have uh, service discovery capabilities built into the system, basically running DNS service within the overlay network. So each of your containers, each of your services running on top of container, they get a DNS address. So it's really easy to configure my WordPress site to talk to MySQL, because I just said, okay, talk to MySQL using a DNS name, and that's it. The containers don't understand the location, encryption, anything. It's super easy. And then of course the, the kind of main thing of, of container is of course the orchestration. Making sure that my containers are running as they should be running. Making sure that I have enough containers running in the specified locations. Of course I can, uh, even though the, the, the services don't 
don't really matter where they are running, but of course I can pinpoint some of the services that, okay, you run only on AppCloud because I want to have the data stored in Finland physically. So I can pinpoint that, okay, databases will go only to AppCloud in, in Helsinki, for example. And then if something dies, some, some of the nodes go away as well. That kind of happens still, even 2017. It still hap happens that services, servers go down. Uh, container then automatically kind of heals up the situation, spins up uh, containers if needed and, and those sort of things. On the node level, what you need is, is as mentioned, basically Docker, and then on top of Docker, uh, there's a content agent running as a privileged container on the machine. So basically, wherever you can run Docker, you can run content. And then the agent itself configures the networking, configures everything for you on the node level. So you basically have to just get, get, the, get the content agent to run and, and that's it. And it needs basically two parameters. One, where to call home to the master and a security token, and that's it. Everything else the agent manages by itself. And then the master can run basically anywhere. Uh, and and uh, with a smallish credit card fee, you can get it hosted by us nowadays also. But the master is kind of the brains of the system, so the master makes all the decisions. The nodes are kind of stupid in a way. They just run containers that they are told to run, and that's it. And of course, the, the master is controlled by the, the, usually the CLI tool that we have, and the CLI tool actually talks to a, a REST API. So, well, it's a REST API, so you can basically integrate anything to it. Everything included. So we, we have a support for running stateful services. Uh, in Content 1 and 2, we included support for stateful volumes. So you can actually, the platform is now able to, to schedule the data also within the Docker volumes for you. Of course, given, given as, uh, that, that, that you have suitable Docker volume plugins for the environment where you are running Contena, of course. But yes. You mean uh, the uh, mani mani management of the volume plugins through Contena? Yes. Not, yes. Not being dependent on, uh, on whatever the Docker, the Docker host that uh, yes. Docker yes. Docker. yes. Yes. There's a kind of work in progress pull request by yours truly <laughs> already in the GitHub for that. <laughs> yes. But it's a work in progress stuff, so not going to be a part of the next release, unfortunately. Uh, not in 1.4, probably in 1.5. Let's see. Uh, VPN access for the overlay network, that's super cool. You anyway have to debug something, do some database maintenance or things like that. Built-in load balancing, two or three configuration items in your YAML file. You have a load balancing set up for your services, super easy. Uh, container collects statistics and logs for all the containers and services. So basically you have one central place to look for your application level statistics and logs. Makes life a lot easier than, than diving through 72 different SSHs and, and trying to find some files and encrypting and, and oof, never again, please. And of course, building user management and audit trail. So who did what and when, because well, you anyway have to find out who broke the damn thing. The blame game is the most important game always, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just really kidding. <coughs> no. uh, and of course, building secrets management. Uh, there's a lot of secret, secret things that you have to configure on your services. Database passwords, API tokens, certificates, private keys, maybe even SSH keys or whatever. But Contena provides a, a secure place where you can store your credentials, see all that, whatever is secret, and then uh, having it kind of centrally managed. So you have actually one place where you can uh, where you go and, and change the MySQL password. 
and that, that gets automatically reflected to the, all the services that needs that password, for example. And of course, we make it secure. <laughs> DAW wouldn't make any sense to have a secret management that wouldn't be secure. Uh, so while at rest, the data is always encrypted, then it goes to the agent uh, on top of TLS, and then the agent, of course, needs to open it and, and then inject it into the container. But all the way up to the container itself, it's always encrypted. Uh, deployment of, of applications through stacks. And Johan will show practical examples how stacks work. Uh, basically, stacks allow you to have uh, reusable kind of uh, applications, building blocks. Uh, we do have quite a lot of uh, this sort of a customization built-in. You, you, you have variables, you have templating functionalities and, and whatnot nowadays in the, in the stacks. Uh, coming soon are requires and, and dependencies between stacks. So basically I, I can say that, okay, my WordPress stacks depends always on MySQL stack. So whenever I install WordPress, it automatically pulls in MySQL and puts that up for me. So that's gonna be really cool. That's gonna be in 1.4 hopefully within next week or two. Uh, yeah, well that's it. Johanny will show more examples how, how stacks actually work. And then of course the, the content on cloud side. So what we provide as a kind of uh, software as a service. So you can have basically your building dashboards and everything for the, the content on platform and in environment. So that's provided as a, as a service on, on cloud.content.io. And of course, nowadays, nowadays also hosted masters available. So just give us your credit card number and we'll have your things running for you. Uh, just pulled in a couple of new things that are gonna be probably uh, in the next release on the on the platform side. So we'll, we'll, we're revamping the Let's encrypt support for certificates. So that's gonna be really cool. We're gonna uh, introduce a, a, a new capability of, of doing the, the domain authorization through TLS SNI, which basically allows us to do auto renewal of your certificates. So basically you have to get your certificate once manually. I mean, certificate get upcloud.com. And then after that, automatic container renews the certificates for you. That's gonna be cool. Uh, there's gonna be a functionality called node draining. So whenever you, when, whenever you need to put your computers on maintenance, well, it happens still. Uh, you can uh, uh, say to content, okay, drain that node. Basically, get all the things that are running there, move them somewhere else before you actually go and plug the cable. Yes, yes. Uh, soft affinities, so uh, up until now we've had affinity rules, but they are hard affinities. So if, if I say that, okay, these, these services will run only on AppCloud, so they will run only on AppCloud. And if, if none of my AppCloud nodes are not available, I cannot deploy that service because I have a hard affinity that it should be running on, only on AppCloud. And so soft affinities is basically something that, okay, it would be great if you would be running on AppCloud, but if not possible, then something else is okay also. So that's gonna be also pretty cool. And then also uh, some pre-start, pre pre-stop hooks. You can fine tune the kind of startup of functionalities of, of your application. That's gonna be, there's quite a lot of neat use cases that, that, that you can use with the, with the hook, new hooks. And then on the cloud side, uh, we're Probably during this year still, we're gonna get out these uh, private stack repositories. God damn, that's a difficult word. Um, so basically you can easily within your organization share your stack files. So it's basically a central place, like kind of like Docker Hub, but for the stack files and stack definitions. And then also, that I'm not really sure if that's gonna be still on, on 2017, but 
I, I guess that's still the plan, to have a, a hosted image registry. So you don't have to use anything else. You can store your images on Container Cloud and have them available privately for you. Yeah, how to get started? Sign up to the cloud, install the container CLI, then on the cloud side, create the platforms, spin up the nodes on App Cloud. Should take less than 10 minutes altogether, and you're ready to rock and roll. And then, of course, we have a public Slack channel. There's awesome people giving help to each other there. Not only us container guys, but also the, the other community guys. And set up there. Yep. So uh, welcome to my awesome demo slash presentation on, on running a 80 style arcade space shooter on a techno technology stack, which includes open cl uh, up cloud, sorry, container and GitLab. And I did manage to include some GitLab CI to this uh, build just before I came here. But yeah, who am I? Uh, my name is Juhani, and I, I work at Nebula as a cloud consultant. Um, mostly I've done some like devops -y, um sysadmin stuff in the past six months in a project which is quite huge. There's a Swedish and a Finnish companies uh, buying to they're trying to develop this uh, app to battle gray market in the construction market. And we are like, we at Nebula are the hosting providers. So offering tools for the developers to develop their app more easily, safely, you know, have, have the time to market cut down as much as possible. Uh, yeah, born and raised in Helsinki, uh, used to be quite less fat much more nowadays, sadly. Um, that's probably because of the pizza. Uh, used to play, play, play indoor hockey as well, but then I broke my knee like a month ago, so that went to shit as well. So hopefully we'll get some action back in, in, in next year. But yeah, um, these are the tools I chose for my demo. As we talked about upcloud and content already, I'll go through them quickly. Uh, upcloud, and these are like my point of view. So like if you wanna get the pamphlets, I guess like the container guys or the upcloud guys can give you ones as well. So upcloud is a great IIS provider with great IOPS, like we heard, they're the fastest. Uh, pretty comprehensive API. Uh, I did use, we're gonna use the API in this demo as well. Uh, the Packer plugin, which I did use as well. And uh, the Terraform thing I put in with the asterisks is because I would really want it to have a Terraform provider plugin, and that's probably something I will start to work at uh, next. And it's written Go, so it's like a good uh, exercise for me to learn Go as well. Uh, Contena, which is a, I would say, like a Kubernetes stylish uh, container orchestration platform with, like Jussi said, all batteries included. Uh, I guess Kubernetes is more like uh, some batteries included, but mostly you have to include the batteries yourself and do stuff yourself. Much more straightforward, much easier to get onto using it. Don't wanna like bash Kubernetes here. I use it at work like a lot, but yeah, it's like if you're, develop, if you're a single or two person developer, company, small company, I would definitely use content because it's much more easier. Um, yeah, uh, HA proxy load balancing, let's encrypt support, OAuth 2 out of the box, which is really nice. The monitoring stuff and especially the logs, like you said, it's like much nicer to, you know, have a central place to look at your logs than to SSH into boxes and, you know, look at them one by one. Uh, the, the stack registry, which is still like, I guess, container only, so like only container stacks are there. But it says you just know. It's, already, it's public already. Okay, cool. But it's only public. Whatever you put there is always public. 
Yeah, for the whole world. The whole world. Okay. Uh, VPN, so it's a point to site VPN. So if you need to go and check the HA proxy backend uh, statistics, for example, like we're gonna do in this demo, you can check it. And you're gonna, you're gonna uh, sign in with the internal IP and not the public one, because there's no access to the public one. And hey, it has a plugin for AppCloud, so we can uh, provision all the resources like this. But yeah, uh, other stuff I used, I used Packer for the, for, the, um, for the GitLab instance and the GitLab runner instance. Uh, I used Docker for the hyperspace, which is the name of the game, uh, to package it. And uh, yeah, I guess we're ready to get on with it then. So firstly, let's get this started then. I'm gonna wind in this a little bit. I'm gonna check out what do we have at first. So first, we want to provision the master to AppCloud. Now, I, 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 would, I want to remind everybody that the, the whole demo is available at my GitHub. So if you want to, you know, check it out later after this, please do. Uh, so yeah, when I press enter now, there's going to be a slight thing, which is going to be that don't have any, yeah, because I'm not at the right. Let's try this again. So yeah, I bumped into this bug yesterday, trying to provision this stuff so the upload provider doesn't really read the RSA key correctly when it's injected via the, but it does work like if I take it away from the switch and then it asks for it. And then if I go and at the public key and insert it like so. Doesn't look very nice, but it does work. But yeah, now the master is provisioning itself in the background. So what I wanted to do in the meantime, because that takes some time, is to use Packer to build a custom disk image for the GitLab runner. The GitLab is already provisioned and running because I, I wanted to cut some down some time from somewhere. And besides, I don't know if this is so interesting to see two times. But yeah, let's do that as well. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's a runner JS, sorry. And uh, this is still running, this is still running, cool. So what we can do in the meantime is, I was hoping this would be faster. Well, I guess we can log into the container cloud then and see it in action. <coughs> Doesn't have anything yet, but when I provision the grid and migrate it to the cloud, we can check and see all the resources we have on the whole clusters, like so services, uh, nodes, the whole logs and stuff. Yeah, still waiting for the master to come alive, but I guess it's done pretty soon. Yeah, sweet. So now I'm gonna create the grid, which is the heart, like you said, the heart of container, pretty much. And uh, I did get some feedback on using an initial size of two, which everybody here probably, if you work in the industry, know that uh, work a load, a work a node, uh, size of two is not really, you know, fault toler tolerant at all, but. There's a gist in this, and it is because the free tier of the cloud only supports two nodes, so that's why I'm using only two nodes. So now we got the grid created, 
and we're going to create the two worker nodes as well. And uh, same stuff here, so we have to cat the public key. to the front. And now it's provisioning us in the worker nodes. And I hope that the Packer stuff is already pretty much done, yeah. Um, I mean, while we're waiting stuff to happen, we, you know, ask, ask anything uh, if you have any questions to to why I'm doing this stuff at all already. <laughs> or anything, just anything. Mm -mm. Uh, for I used it for GitLab and the GitLab runner. So if we check the JSON file for the GitLab, it looks like this. So I'm basically uh, using a upcloud builder, which is a custom builder and uh, giving my API user privileges to that. And uh, then I'm basically uh, provisioning some stuff that I need for the GitLab and installing GitLab. And uh, nothing too fancy here. It's pretty vanilla, but yeah. Same deal with the runner, except that the actual GitLab instance has to be online before the runner is provisioned, of course, because it uh, calls to the GitLab instance. Um, are we done already? No. But yeah, definitely one thing I, I hope we will see in the future is that we're going to see the, the Terraform stuff to come to UpCloud as well, because Packer is only for making custom images, but Terraform would be nice to have to provision like all the infrastructure would need, so like VMs, disks and stuff. But I guess that's something hopefully the guys will look into in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, nice, nice. So yeah, uh, let's check out my GitLab, which is already running that I provisioned before coming here. And check that the actual runner now called on to the, yeah, so it shows up here. The thing is we have to still spin up the VM. So let's do that. So now we're gonna call uh, the, well, I'm an ops guy, so this is my way of talking with the API, curl. It's pretty old fashioned, but it does the work that, it, that is needed. So yeah, I'm gonna check for the templates and I'm probably gonna see my GitLab templates, or hopefully I will see it. Yeah, there it is, so I'm gonna copy paste the identifier and then I'm gonna provision the server. I know, I know, this is really old school, but it's pr pretty much the only way I know how to, don't know it, write any fancy tools about it. And like my colleagues at work will beat me up if I use like Postman or anything like that, so only curl. So yeah, that started up and uh, you can go to UpCloud to check that the servers are actually spinning up as well. Oh yeah, now you'll see my passwords for all the porn sites I go to. <laughs> no, just kidding. So yeah, uh, we've got a, quite many servers running already, so we can see the container master is one of them, and the two nodes for the container grid already up. GitLab is already up, and the GitLab runner is coming up, up as well. 
So the next thing is to check that the, well, that's still in provision, okay? We can continue with the GitLab stuff then in the meantime. The one thing I want to do here, because I, I know that the CI uh, note file or the YAML file will tell that the uh, runner has to have a tag called Condena. So I'm going to do that now. That's, that's a pretty easy way to divide the runners for different projects or different uh, clients even to use because there might be some situations where you want to have different runners for different clients. Um, hopefully, yeah, so this is done. And we should have two nodes up and uh, yeah, awesome sauce. So now what we're going to do is to actually fire up the stack bot. I guess we're going to check it out before I do that. Yeah, so this is basically what a container stack file would look like. Uh, it's a pretty basic one. There isn't really anything fancy stuff going on here, uh, except for the secret part. Um, like, personally, I've, I've done a lot, or I would just say it. Uh, at work, we do a lot of different environments for our clients. Kubernetes environments, and uh, we use the secret files to house the all, all of the changing variables. So all the stack, well, so let's say the deployment files in Kubernetes, but stack files in, in container would be all be the same for different environments, but the environment variables which configure the applications would change. But that gives it much less overhead on the admin side. But now what we're gonna do is to create the load balancer domain, so an endpoint pretty much for the load balancer to know where the guide traffic to. Uh, let's see, I guess I had that, yeah, already written down. So before we do that, we're gonna write that and actually we're gonna write the certificate as well. This is a self-signed, so not yet using let's encrypt, which are free though, so definitely gonna switch to that in the future. But yeah, so let's install the load balancer first. And what I did with the load balancer is that uh, I gave it a, a, a promptable variable and a, an affinity attached to that variable uh, for the load balancer and why? Because I, I want to have a single node that houses the load balancer because I want to have a single IP which I can call when I want to direct my traffic coming from the outside world. So let's use shy C55 and it should provision the containers to that node. It's pretty, uh, like the, the promptable variables are pretty a nifty thing, I would say. I haven't seen that anywhere else. Uh, so yeah, should have the stack up now, yeah. And if we look at it, we should see that it is on the node that I wanted, yeah. So that's where the, and these are the hard affinities as you see told, told us before. So if it doesn't find the node, it's gonna fail. The deployment's gonna fail. But now if we install the actual application, and tell my host file where to find it, we're gonna see beautiful glimpse of a game. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna check out the node ls, yeah. Content on node show, I'm gonna do that, yeah. Uh, and I should have a, sorry. Should have a, yeah. This is nice. And 
Is this done? Yep. So now this should work. Woo! Thank you, thank you. But there is still some stuff coming up. But yeah, so how many minutes was that? Like 10 from, from the beginning. So I, we didn't have any worker nodes. We didn't have the master node. We didn't have anything set up before except for the GitLab. Uh, but nothing like actually running the workloads. And probably like 10 minutes later, we had everything. So this is somewhat fault tolerant now. We should have more nodes, but still works. And uh, but there isn't any sound. So if somebody wants to help me with the sounds, help is appreciated. But yeah, so moving on. Uh, what's next? I guess the one thing I wanted to show as well, and this is the reason I, I chose to show another or another game, another application as well, is the, the, the load balancer uh, custom settings you can use, which are pretty nice. So yeah, I have this one here. So basically, as it is a HA proxy under the hood, we can give it custom HA proxy rules and this, that basically says that to redirect all HTTP traffic to HTTPS. So uh, as the hyperspace app doesn't really work with HTTPS, I don't know why, I chose to use another game, which is a, oh yeah, forgot the, forgot to put in the custom domain for the other game. Because the gist here is that the, the load balancer looks at the host header for the incoming traffic and directs traffic based on that. And you could use uh, even more, more granular rules to how to guide the traffic. So let's say you had like a um, API that only you, you, could, you would only want people to use like specific routes or specific paths. You could do that as well. Oh yeah, I had it here. So yeah, add that. Oh, sorry. As well. And uh, but yeah, I guess we have to still configure this real fast. And as I'm a clever boy, I know that it is on the same address as the hyperspace app as well, as well. And it's the same address, cool. So this should work as well now. And it doesn't. Fantastic. Ah, yeah. Amateur mistake. Uh, in a way, I, I tend to think that the stack files are a, if you guys know what Kubernetes uh, Helm charts are, they're like these curated apps, especially for Kubernetes. And they could in, like include a whole WordPress stack. So a MySQL backend, WordPress application, a load balancer front end. And they, the stack files in a way are the same. So, oh yeah, it even has my, old session in like remembers it as well. Oh shit, by, by looking bad if, if you see my score. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if I try to go to port 80, should redirect me to port 443, yeah, and it does. So yeah, basically using, especially using the Let's Encrypt search, we could uh, use browser uh, trusted search so this would be green over here. And uh, yeah, the load balancing stuff on Contena is pretty cool. I personally like how easy it is. Um, so what's next? Oh yeah, the VPN. So now that we have seen uh, how the load balancer works in action, we, sh like we probably wanna see 
a little bit about the stats. So that's pretty much as difficult it gets to creating a point side VPN connection to the grids that I'm using. Hopefully it works on the first go, but I guess uh, I did test this usually, before. Usually it does, usually it does yeah. Ah, but I have a thing we can do in, in, in the meantime, which is to migrate the platform to the cloud. And I mean like nothing, nothing, like no other container orchestrator has this. This is pretty cool. Or none that I know of. Uh, you can see all the worker nodes. You can see the overview of how your cluster is going, like how, what's the situation on. Uh, you see your services, you see your volumes, if you had any, or don't have any. Uh, you see the keys in your vaults. You have an audit trail on who does what to where. Uh, but the most common thing I probably have used here is the load balancer logs. So, you can do this on the CLI as well, but this is much faster, I would say. And uh, one last thing, which is really cool, I, I, I just actually figured this out today, that they have even a terminal here on the, on, the, on the cloud, which is quite awesome. And I can do stuff here as well. So now if you're like in, in the, Let's say you're on a vacation and your, your client calls you that, hey, dude, everything's gone to hell and you know you have to fix this immediately and you don't have your laptop with you. Could in a way, you could go to a, a you know, internet kiosk and, and troubleshoot via the terminal in the browser. Hopefully no one, none of us have to do that ever, but usually that does happen from time to time. Uh, but yeah, OpenVPN is now, yeah, it uses OpenVPN, let's say that out loud now, under the hood, and uh, we're going to take the VPN, if I remember the, no, the com, yeah, conf, config, it's nice to have you sit there too, as my personal guidance here. <laughs> I had a file ready ready made and I personally use tunnel blick. Uh, oh yeah. It's the path. Okay. VPN details and then for for whatever reason you have to drag and drop it to the UI. I know, but this is how I've learned this. <laughs> so yeah, now the configuration as well is uploaded and should connect pretty fast. Uh, for 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 the reason we're used for testing this now, it's right out right testing this out now uh, is to check out the load balancer stats, but I mean that isn't really that interesting, but as you said before, uh, like troubleshooting any backend issue with let's say any database you would have would definitely be like useful. The VPN would definitely be useful to pull that. But yeah, so now we should have the, yeah probably should remember how to use the CLI then. Uh, let's take the private IP. Go to the browser, port 1000. Uh, I had it written up, the default user. Don't ever use the default user, you should always change that, as I never do. <laughs> yes, that's in secret. Yay, and now we can see the load balancer statistics as well. And the cool stuff here is that if you never used HA proxy before is that we can see the different backends growing and, and going down. So if we wanna scale our stack, 
uh, let's say the two one uh, game, I think it was. We want three instances. Oh, service, sorry. Yeah. Uh, don't look, don't look. This is embarrassing app. Yeah. I knew there was something fishy going on. Uh, but yeah, now I'm, I'm scaling the two for the the game or the I don't know what's it actually like twenty forty eight game to three instances and uh, should start popping up here as well. Yeah, and now we've got three different backends that it's running traffic to. It's pretty cool. It's all like automatic, dynamic. Uh, yeah, pretty fantastic, I would say. And you don't see it here. And because there's a cookie, even remembers my session when I played this at home, sadly. Should, should it score? Go away. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what I do at work is pretty much help the developers help themselves. So now we're going to move on with the GitLab CI stuff, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, GitLab is done. I guess the GitLab runner is done as well. Had it over here, yeah. And now we want to, yeah, OK. Create our first project. Actually, I had done that already. Yeah, um, we have to, yeah, we have to change the token by which the GitLab runner calls the actual uh, GitLab instance. So yeah, I have a token here. So what I am to, doing here, uh, master token, yeah, master token. Have to check out the help fast create, and then we had expires in because we don't want this to expire ever. Zero, and we want to see the token. So yeah. So this token is pretty much the all power uh, secret that we're going to use for the GitLab to call our cluster when we want to push any new deployment via version control. Um, maybe, I will, maybe I'll explain this a little better. So GitLab is basically a version control, same as GitHub, but much like there's much more pieces to it. Uh, the, the thing I really love is the CI CD stuff, uh, which basically means continuous integration and continuous deployment. Uh, and in my case, what I do at work a lot is to develop the CI in a such way that the all commits that come to the repository are checked, are uh, packaged, uh, are then uh, deployed to whatever container registry, because we use Docker containers as well, and then pull to the cluster, and then there's going to be some, some checkup that the whole, the right version went to production or, uh, de or development or whatever. Some tests. Um, yeah. So let's give it a shot. Probably this will fail on some, because of whatever reason, but let's give it a go at first. Yeah, didn't assign any runners. So yeah, we have to ru assign runners to this project. So let's go over here and I'm gonna enable it to this project, yeah. Now we can go back to the project. And we can probably, I guess if it's pending, let's stop that, yes. And run it again. So hopefully, I bet I forgot to do something, but luckily when it fails, it will tell me what I forgot.
Um, yeah, I don't know if that's too interesting to see, but I can show you what it's supposed to do. Uh, what it does is it pulls a, a uh, no, it, it builds the Docker image out of the repository where the game lives and then pushes that to the public Docker hub and then tells uh, Consena to get that image, the updated image to the cluster and then check that the right version is now running. Uh, these little shell scripts are basically just another curl. And then in, even a bigger curl with some if else stuff going on. Hmm. Did I forget something more? No, it's still working. Yeah, something I forgot to do. Was it because I forgot to push this? Could be. Let's see. No, that looks good. Hmm. And this I thought was gonna be the cool part and it doesn't work. Ah. You know what? Could be that. This is actually wrong. Yeah. Hmm. What I did is that I forgot to put in the right token for the runner. So it, it's calling for the wrong place pretty much. So it doesn't work. I have to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, don't know if that's something we want to do right now. We could do this. Do you, do you have an old one? <coughs> yeah, I do. I do, I do. Uh, yeah had some past ones over here. So as I said, what it does is it uh, builds a Docker image, then pushes it to the Docker hub with some variables that I gave the CI uh, node file or YAML file, and then pushes it to the hub. And this does nothing else. This is the build step. And then the other one is, is to uh, yeah, trigger the deployment. So it calls the container API and uh, tells it to update the deployment with the image that was now b just built. And uh, yeah, then it checks that the current uh, or the correct version is, is up and running. Uh, that's pretty much it. So what we can do, because I screwed this up, is to actually put the server down with my fat and and uh, build the image again. But we could have some question Q and A in the mid in the between. So let's have the final thing after that. I know. Yeah, I mean, like, try to be really professional, but then I, I you know. Anyway, uh, let's get the servers. Probably would be faster to check out the GUI, but I don't like the GUI, so we're gonna do this like this. 
even though probably somebody is laughing to me that a better tools exist. I know. No. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, when you when you do the when you install the runner, the the main thing here is to tell what the the master is, tell what tokens you use, and uh, yeah. So forgot to put in those probably because that was the first thing I did. Uh, let's remove it, and uh, yeah. Guys should have get gotten more beer. It would be more fun to look my troubleshooting. Uh, anyway, it's gone now, and uh, I even have to remove actually the template because the template has the wrong parameters. Did I get it? Yeah, and I now have to remove the runner template as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, the Contana master is at this address. So children, when you do this at home, remember that even the mighty fall sometimes. And GitLab address, I guess, was still the same. Was it? Yeah. And let's ch double check the runner token then. Oh, yeah, that was to say, ah, now I know. The wrong address, yeah. Have to be that. Anyway, let's do this again. And in the meanwhile, I would say that if you guys have any questions? Let's do them that now, because like this will take some time. Yeah, I will. So when you see uh, GitLab uh, GI setup there, uh, in the second item, there are some <coughs> like run some commands, then sleep for one minute, <coughs> and follow the run something else. So I was wondering what was the one minute. Uh, uh, so yeah, I was asked why the sleep in, in between the commands. Uh, it's because um, when you update the image, it takes some time for the nodes to download the, uh, the new image from the repository or, Git or Docker Hub and spin it up. So that takes some time. And uh, my, 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 my checkup on which version is running is like, it doesn't wait for the deployment to come up, to come alive. So there's not like, it's not that dynamic. So that's why the sleep, because it has to wait for some time for the new deployment to be deployed, for so the new image to be come alive. Exact minute is by, by one minute, it is one, like, almost always works. After 60 seconds, it should be, the new version should be deployed or there's something wrong. Yeah. And that's, that's the, that's the check up and about. If, if, it, if for some, for whatever reason it's still, after 60 seconds, it hasn't been updated, then it should fail. And I should be notified by it. Uh, we can check it actually, the, what it does in the checkup is that it's a basic girl that calls the, I don't, don't see any cool stuff. Well, basically this is the token that I generated from the master. This is the endpoint that I'm calling, which is a stack endpoint in the API. Uh, pipelining that to some, you know, fancy stuff to get the image version out of it. And if it's not the same, which I'm getting from the CI pipeline, then it should fail. So 
and it's like it's basically just just checking that this if it, if it needs to be eight and it's seven then it fails for whatever reason um, yeah the other part is well this is basically just you know updating the, the stack of the service Yeah, I could, I could, could be more smart about it, but I mean, like I did this today, so. But it works. And it works, it works if the runner works. <laughs> so let's hope, fingers crossed, and toes as well. One thing that I, I, I will also myself uh, can realize is that that uh, Docker Hub having feature globally distributed as feature, uh, of course, not strongly consistent. Whenever you push something, and then immediately with the same nanosecond, or on the next nanosecond, pull it across the, the, the world, you probably won't get any reversion rate. So hence you, you see some speed right now also. Yeah, this is a really cheap way of, you know, tricking the thing, pretty much. A cheap way of... of um, not having to learn how to do really cool bash scripts on you know checking which deployment and waiting for the deployment to come alive and stuff uh, like bill gates one once said and i think he's right uh, lazy workers are always the best because they find the most efficient way to do work uh, is my no it's still running but yeah any more questions Docker what? Sorry. The Docker JSON file. Uh, the yeah, I was asked uh, why did I choose the JSON file? I guess. No, no, you did show it again. Yeah, I showed it. Yeah, yeah. You want to see it again? You want to see the runner or the GitLab one? Is it? That's the runner, yeah. Shouldn't have anything particularly damaging to myself. So all the keys are self-made, so yeah. Um, yeah. Basically installs the runner packages and uh, tells where the GitLab actually ha like lives and, and calls, calls home in a sense. Oh yeah, I did fight with this a little bit because um, the runner has to trust the, the CA cert that the master or the GitLab uses, and uh, that isn't that easy to do. But luckily, I found this one liner to do it. Mm, that's done. So let's hope that it works. Then let's get the templates again. And uh, runner, get the this one, the ID, so the template in the, in the upstart API is, is, is like an image. Uh, no, it's a it's a basically a disk file. Okay, yeah. So you use that disk file to then provision to an actual server. And uh, if you look at my my JSON body here, I'm telling which parameters to use for the, gen uh, the creation of the actual server. And as I, I mentioned before, this would be much nicer inside a uh, YAML file and uh, would say Terraform over here, but yeah, still waiting for that. Um, so, what do we want to do with starting up? I guess we can go and check if it is coming along. Yeah, this should show me two runners now. It does. Let's remove the old one. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What do we need? What do we need? What do we need? What do we need? It 
what's up. You're running already. Ah, so yeah, it started running immediately when it noticed that there's something happening. So yeah, the pipeline job that was pending because of the wrong runner setup now actually started automatically and it built a new Docker image and pushed that to Docker Hub. And the next step, which is the deployment should be going on right now. So yeah, now it updated the, the image. It sleeps for 60 seconds for it to wait for the, to download the new image. And then should check that the correct version is running. And we can, we can do a little exercise here that we are gonna push some stuff to the repository and see if this magic happen immediately. And that's the whole value here, I would say. Like you're a developer and you want to see your stuff play out immediately. You have CI stuff going around in, in the background. Uh, I would say this is sexy cool, but that's just me. And it succeeded, nice. So now we should have show hyperspace. Yeah, I should remember to hyperspace game. Mm. So now, yeah. What, what were the uh, difficult things in, in soft work? Uh, naming things and... Yeah, I guess that's the one, the, one of the biggest. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, as we see, the, the tag here is 11. So that's the, the most recent build of this image. But now if we, wanted to go and I'm like, yeah, I want to go to the hyperspace app repo. I've got a repository in a, in a repository. It's not that, don't do that. It's not good, but let's go and uh, do some stuff here. Hey, it works. And they are watching me, judging me. Yeah, so now we see that there's something changed, or we should see. Where did I do that? Did I save it? Dude. Even my code is telling me that it is. The readme stuff is changed. Where am I? Correct place. Hmm. That is kind of weird, okay. Anyway, uh, changed readme. Let's do it like with the GUI. Hmm, curls, that's fine. Yeah, I guess this is because of having a repository in a repository. It's not what you want to do, basically. Uh, the that's correct. It's still fine. Well, shit. Let's do something in the actual. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's change this then, if it works. I think you need to like start of the uh, hyperspace app in this directory. You had two different checkouts. Did I? True, I have two different folders. Yes, no, this should say something. Hey! I don't know why they pay me the big bucks, but luckily they do. Don't tell them anything. Uh, modified, read me. Nah, and push this thing. So. Go to pipelines. Ah, oh, actually started already. Yeah, so it started to immediately push another version. And I, I don't, like if we go and check what's going on, it's pushing it. Did 
job done. And then uh, if we go back, check out the deployment. Has already called the container master API, waiting for 60 seconds. Hopefully it will be done. And after this, we should see the image tag should be 12 and not 11. And uh, all of you key night uh, watches at the audience would have figured out already that the 11 is the time, amount of times I've pushed this or tested this before. So this is the 12th time I've run the pipeline now. Yeah, so that's done. It's all green and green. That's the color we love. And now we should have a different version as we have. And this should work even if I refresh it. Woo! -hoo. And it works. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it with everything included. Uh, what we did here is that we provisioned the, the whole cluster and the developer nodes on which to develop this app. And we pushed the runner to help the developers get their code up and running fast. And then we troubleshooted some CI stuff because it didn't work out of the box because I was too nervous. But yeah, luckily it worked in the end. Um, if you guys have any more questions, I'm, I'm open for them. Uh, if you want to try out the game, it's super fun. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it.